Good morning, Coldwell Banker George Realty. Thank you for coming to session two of the change forms. We're going to go through each one. Uh, before we do that, I want to make a couple of quick announcements. Uh, I hope that you all saw the um, balcony inspection law uh, Zoom meeting uh, announcement that went out yesterday. We'll send it out a couple of more times. We are very fortunate. We have a company coming in that does uh, the balcony inspections, and one of their inspectors is going to be speaking to us. That is Tuesday, this upcoming Tuesday via Zoom at 10 a.m., so I hope you can all attend. This will help you if your clients have any questions on that, then you've been to the training, and you'll have a contact if, if you need to help your clients get some scheduling on that. So I hope you can all attend. Next Tuesday at, at 10 a.m. via Zoom, and we'll send out a couple of more announcements on it. The other thing that I want to mention is on the uh, optional wildfire disclosure report. I'm always thinking about what I said. Last time, I think I misspoke, but I want to correct because I've been in contact with SNAP and HG just to make sure. So on the optional wildfire disclosure report, as we said last week, it's around 140. When would somebody want that? Well, if it's in a higher, very high fire zone, and that is, again, still optional at that point. And what that report does, is it goes more in depth as to the risk um, assessment of you know, that particular parcel. So it's still optional at that point, even if it's in a high or very high fire zone. So you can order that or your client can think about it, but I just wanted to correct myself in case I didn't say that last week. So to make the training um, a little bit uh, more flowing, we're gonna go through the vacant land purchase agreement and not the residential income and commercial purchase agreement, although you have copies of those. And the reason why is because the changes are the same. So I don't want to scroll through three contracts and keep saying the same thing. So we want to make it uh, a little bit shorter so that we can go through it. So once you get the changes, and some of these you saw last week, we've already went through them. So we're going to get started on the changes. Um, in this training, uh, because we want to make sure we're all on the same page. If you have a question, um, un uh, unmute yourself and ask, and the same in the room. Okay, so let's get started. So we're only going to be highlighting the red areas you see here. They've added for the insurance on all of the agreements. So insurance now is its own contingency before it was embedded in the inspection period. 17 days after acceptance, or you can amend it. As we mentioned to you last week, the minute you get an escrow, please be reminding your client to be calling right away for insurance, because as you know, there's been some problem on that. Um, but it can be managed as long as you're starting early enough. So make sure, and if you don't think the 17 days is enough, then you can amend it uh, for more days and talk to the listing agent and tell them that the client's already on that for insurance, okay? So right down here, so if there's a lease um, or tenant in place on the land, there's now a, a box to check for that. So, and it says over here, the property to be delivered subject to the tenant's right. So maybe on land, somebody's leasing a portion or the whole uh, property. So they've made a checkbox to cover that. So here they've added, and I like that they've done this, they've added more um, boxes so that if you're asking for uh, different reports, uh, it could be an environmental phase one or whatever you're asking for, they have it here. And you're going to check if both are going to pay, buyer or seller, whatever reports that you, uh, your client will be asking for, you, you put the name of the report in here and check who is financially responsible to pay for that report. So fees and uh, the report, I'm sorry, excuse me, the fee, the report, who's going to supply the report, the cost of the report is down here. So just because you ask the seller to provide you a report does not mean they're going to pay for corrections. 
So if there's any fees and costs associated with that, check the appropriate box. Um, you see that sometimes on um, home inspections. Sometimes they just supply the reports, but we also need to cover the fees and costs, who's going to be responsible for the corrective costs, okay? So here they've added residential purchase agreement addendum to the land. So I was thinking, wow, that's interesting. I did sell a property in Santa Clarita, had an old, old wooden house on there. Yes, we still had to do disclosures. You could not live in it, but the structure was there. So I think they may have added this to uh, the purchase agreement for land just in that case, because I have sold property with abandoned houses, uh, but it was zoned for land. So I have this attached. It doesn't have changes on it. It's been a form we've had, so we can take a look at that. So the increased deposit is specified up above in paragraph 3D2. They're just reminding you where it's at. So that's if you've already put your initial deposit in, and you're going to make an increased deposit into escrow, uh, that would be noted in up above in the grid and 3D2. They're just reminding you where that's at. So they're tightening up a lot of things so it's easier, easier to find. So down payment, they're telling you it's in the grid, paragraph 3F. So they've tightened things up. Um, and limits on credits to buyer, any credit to buyer as specified in 3G1 or otherwise agreed. So if there's a, a credit to the buyer, it's gonna be noted up in the grid. And remember, I we always say this, if you are obtaining a credit for your buyer and there's a lender involved, make sure you have checked with the lender to make sure they can absorb that whole credit amount because if they can't, then you're leaving money on the table if you didn't handle it in another way. For instance, if it's $10,000, but the lender can only absorb $8,000, you may want to uh, consider reducing the price by $2,000. You never want your buyer to get to the closing table and leave money on the table because we didn't handle it in a different way. So always check with the lender if a lender is involved to make sure that the credit amount is something that the lender can handle, okay? because otherwise you can leave money on the table. Okay, so verification of down payment. They're just giving you the paragraphs to make it easier. With uh, That's specified in 3H2 above in the grid. The intended use, the buyer intends to use the property as indicated in, in 3E3. So I was like, intended use, what, what do they mean? Well, that means is it an investment property? So it defaults to investment on this particular agreement. So if you look back at 3E3, you'll see that it's it's defaulting to investment and that's up in the grid. So these are pretty simple changes. They're just tightening it up and referring you back to the grid section of where these are and they're renumbering where they need to. Okay, so Fair Appraisal Act, as we learned last week, it is now embedded into the contract. It is not a separate form any longer. So it's paragraph three. They've checked this, that it is included here. So they're referring you to paragraph 33 for additional information. So that cuts down on one form and adds the fair appraisal into the agreements. All agreements will include this insurance that this agreement as specified, they're referring you back to the appropriate paragraph in the grid, that it's contingent upon the buyer's assessment and availability and approval uh, for the insurance policy. So they're, I, I love the way they're referring us back to the grid because if we're, where, we're looking at a paragraph, we can always look back at that grid. So they've just done some corrections here on the numbering. And just a correction here to add the paragraph as specified in paragraph 3Q. The buyer investigation, um, buyer investigations, um, they've added this, do not include among other things an assessment of the availability and cost in general of homeowners insurance. Um, so they've added these. So again, they're just tightening things up. You can see once you learn one agreement and we went over the residential, I believe last week, 
a lot of the changes, unless it's very specific, are going to be the same riding throughout the contracts. So here they've just added an additional paragraph on 17. And 17.3, um, I, I really like this change that they've made. The buyer is advised not to remove contingencies related to review of documents until and after the documents have been delivered. So as we said last week, if you deliver those documents late, let's say you had a 17 day contingency period and, and the seller did not deliver them till day 16, then that buyer has five days from data receipt to review those. So we don't want to be the one causing the contingencies to be extended. So to the best of your ability, uh, please get the disclosures out. I realize sometimes the seller um, doesn't have them or isn't ready, but as an agent, just let them know to try to get those out within the contingency period, because if you deliver late, it extends by five days. But if you deliver on the 10th day, it's, it's you know, day 11 to 16, so you'd be fine, okay? But I like to get those out as soon as possible. It's It's more, you know, cohesive and fair to the buyer. So notice a buyer or seller to perform, except for close of escrow. So when you're delivering a notice to perform, it does not include the demand for close of escrow. We have a separate form for that. So they're just reminding you in here that except for close of escrow, because you would, you would use a demand to close, okay? And if the notice, we went over this last week, so you'll see this riding through all the contracts, is for multiple items. The, if you checked and asked them to remove something that wasn't ready for removal, this notice to perform is only valid for those items that are within the time frame to remove. If you check something that's not within the time frame, it's not valid. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just make sure that you're watching your time frames. Sometimes a buyer will be completely locked and loaded and ready to remove. That's fine. Um, so, but if you do a notice to perform, make sure that you're staying on the timelines and you're not asking them to remove contingencies that are, are not yet right or ready to be removed, uh, according to the contract. Okay. So notice to perform can be delivered two days prior to those contingencies, um, being required to be removed, or you can send it on the day. So there's different strategies for that. I'll leave that to you and your um, client. So brokers and agents compensation. Um, if seller agrees to pay the obligation of the buyer to compensate buyer's broker, and that's they, they're they referring you back to the get grid 3G3. I know there's a lot of talk around the compensation and that we have not addressed it yet, but we will. Uh, we'll be up again next week. Uh, with the third session of that. But as soon as those everything drops on that, we're going to have a meeting right away. So we will go over some things, how you can talk to your clients and what this new uh, compensation uh, for the buyer's broker means. So we are going to address that. So uh, as soon as everything drops on it and Peter will probably be addressing it mostly, but we're going to take care and address it with you. So, so uh don't worry about that. We'll take care and address it, okay? So you see here, um, we had a great training by um, Glen Oaks Escrow and they went over this escrow holder shall provide buyer and seller um, either um, jointly or separate, uh, separately a closing uh, statement or written documentation showing the compensation paid to respectively buyer's broker and seller's broker so people were asking, does that mean that, you know, both sides are seeing the commission? No, you disclose the buyer's um, compensation to the um, buyer. Seller's compensation to the seller is how Glen Oaks legal is interpreting it. So I wanted to just say that, but that you should have, make sure that the compensation that is paid is disclosed to either your seller or your buyer, which of course is a seller, you normally have a listing agreement and the buyer's compensation for now, you're gonna use the um, CBC, okay? So as you can see, it's not a lot, it, it's pretty easy. 
So we went over this last week too, um, delivery of documents, a document um, or applicable link shall be determined to be in possession if it is located in the um, inbox for the applicable party or authorized agent. So, so they're saying once you send it and the a lot of the reports on the, there's blue hyperlinks. So you can send that. So the booklet, the earthquake booklet, things like that, I always send that electronically because I wanna make sure that I've shown delivery of it. I don't wait and hand a book to somebody, no. Just deliver it electronically because it's in our car forms. We can deliver all of that electronically. So here's where they brought in the um, Fair Appraisal Act. And now it's here embedded into the um, offer and it is not a separate form. So they just have done renumbering, renumbering. And then we went over this last week. So they've added um, verbiage here that if the property is sold under the jurisdiction of a probate court, identify buyer as executor or administrator, and um, they want the full name of the entity if a trust. So you will enter the, the full information here. And they did it for the buyer and seller side. And let's come down here. Um, confirmation of, okay, here's the important part that I was listening to the escrow officer. So I wanna bring this up. Confirmation of offered comp uh, compensation. It should be attached to the offer in a, right now, it, it could change, but in a CBC, okay? So you're gonna attach the agreement for compensation even right now as it's on the MLS because it is telling escrow to use that form for compensation. So let's all make sure when we're writing an offer that we're attaching that form, okay? And so right now you could put, according to the MLS, there's a box you can check. Um, but when it changes and the, the compensation is no longer on the MLS, we're gonna have a training on that. But for now, please, if you're writing offers right now, include that CBC. Because that's what escrow is going to use for for you know payment. Okay. Residential units purchase addendum. This isn't new, but I just attached it because it's referencing in this land agreement. And you can see that they use this form for use with a commercial uh, purchase agreement. Maybe it's um, a mixed use or vacant land. So this form can attach to those if it's applicable. Like if you have an old building on a piece of land or a residential unit, which I've seen, or in commercial, maybe there's mixed use and there's some residential. So if that's the case, make sure that you are attaching this form. Again, this isn't new. It's just, I wanted to bring it in because it is attached to the vacant land agreement. Contingency for sale of buyer's property. So here they've added the close of escrow date. So that's good to know because um, before it was just the escrow number, they did not have the close of um, escrow date. That would be something really uh, important for your seller to know and to make a decision, you know, for this contingency. So that's a pretty simple add. That's all they added here. Seller's purchase of replacement property. So here, buyer's cost, they've added a 6C. If Seller cancels pursuant to 6A or B. Seller shall return any deposit. Um, and if this is checked, after delivering receipts to escrow holder, buyer shall be entitled to buyer's reasonable out-of-pocket expenses for inspection reports, um, et cetera. And, and they have an amount that you can specify here to limit the uh, exposure of that cost. Um, I just handled one of these yesterday. So I was looking real close to make sure those boxes weren't checked because we're representing the seller. So these are new. So just make sure you're looking to see if these boxes are checked or not. And then, um, you know, you can advise your seller. Okay. So that's the only change on that form. Cancellation of contract. Let's see. So here is the same thing. 
They've added that same thing. If checked, the seller is agreeing to pay the buyer for out-of-pocket expenses, inspection reports, et cetera. So when you are handling these for your clients, please make sure you're looking for that check because it's small. So make sure that you're cognizant of it. You're looking for it because um, we don't want to miss a check mark because that could be, you know, that's financial consequences on somebody. Okay. Demand to close escrow. So they're, they're telling the buyer, if you do not close escrow by the end of the time period um, in this demand to close, the seller has, and the seller has fully performed, the seller may do any or some combination of the following. This is all they've added is this blue, cancel the agreement, bring legal action against you for damages, bring legal action against you uh, to force you to buy the property, specific performance. So the only thing they added here is in blue to tighten up, um, to let you know that it could be any or a combination of these, these um, clauses here. So note to seller, same thing here. They, um, if the buyer may do any or some of the combinations here, cancel the agreement, bring legal action, et cetera. So they're tightening up all of these. These are pretty simple changes. Um, so I'm going to stop for a minute and see if Peter has any comments or there's any questions. Okay. Is everybody able to follow along in their packages in here? Is it okay? All right. Okay. So we're going to move on to the residential lease or month to month rental agreement. So ten, I like that they added this. So the tenant agrees to pay blank as a security deposit. So now they're reminding us of the maximum on page one of the security deposit, the maximum amount of the security deposit paid on or before the initial occupancy cannot exceed one month's rent unless an exception applies. See security deposit exceptions, car form SDDA for additional information. Security deposit is in addition to any advance payment of the first month's rent. So a lot of times, you, as we all know that do leases, they come in with the security deposit, plus they're gonna come in with the first month's rent. So the first month's rent is separate, right? Do you know what that exemption is? The top yeah, rent? yeah, I, I don't know it on the top, but it is embedded in the form, I'll show you. Okay, okay. yeah. So security deposit law does not prohibit the payment of advanced rent of not less than six months rent if the term of the lease is six months or longer. So that's if somebody wants to prepay advanced rent. That's not the security deposit, it is advanced rent, okay? So uh, Peter, did you have anything to add to yeah, that? Advanced rent, it has not, it cannot be less than six months. Okay, if so it's advanced not... rent, Peter's saying it cannot be less than six months. That's why they put six months in here. Okay, security deposit uh, will be, um, we're always gonna be checking transferred or held to the um, the owner of the premises because we, we don't hold any um, funds in, at the brokerage. That's the landlord does that, okay? Okay, hang on, there's... Okay, so they've added a checkbox on 24 um, A. So th there's a checkbox if the tenant is already in possession, okay? And then they've added that the, the possession is deemed terminated when the tenant returned all keys of the premises to the housing provider. So those two are new here. So make sure you're aware of that if you're doing leasing. <clears throat> so here is the, um, if the tenant is an entity, we need to um, have the name here. And if the property I don't is sold under the jurisdiction of probate, well, this is a lease, but at any rate, um, they've added this language, the same as with the other contracts. Um, and then you would put the name here, okay? If the entity is under a trust, we need the complete trust name. 
So the same here for the housing provider if it's under a or month to month. Mm -hmm. Pardon me. Okay. So the same verbiage is here. If the housing provider is a trust or an entity, you need to provide the name of that trust. And you need to also, this isn't new, but as you know, you type in the authorized signer, right? So you need to make sure you're dealing with the person that is authorized to sign on behalf of that entity. So if it's an LLC, I always pop into the Secretary of State website and I try to find that entity and I see if I'm dealing with the person. If not, I'll ask them for those records, okay? Security deposit uh, disclosure and addendum. So here, um, okay, you were asking about the exceptions, Carlos. Yeah. It is on the SDDA and the exception is on outlined in number two. It is not new. So the exceptions to um, the property security deposit law, the landlord is a, a natural person or an LLC in which all members are natural persons. The landlord owns no more than two residential um, rental properties and collectively includes no more than four dwelling units offered for rent. Okay, so those are your exceptions. Now there's a further exception if it's a um, member of the service, the armed services, okay? And they've added this for us and they've detailed what that means, an active member of Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, et cetera, um, Coast Guard or reserve member of any uh, just named armed forces and a member of the California National Guard, okay? Even if the landlord meets the conditions established in paragraph two, the, may, the landlord may not demand or receive security deposit from the, the, the military members exceeding one month's rent, okay? So make sure that you understand these things. It is really outlined on SDD, uh, SDDA. I love this form because like you, Carlos, it's like if we're not reading it all the time, and we're we're getting back into leasing. I, for me too, I had to find this. So this is really important that we know these um, exemptions and we remember about the active military or or the reserves and things. Okay. So pro uh, there's a probate um, agreement purchase addendum. Don't you check the box if that is the case. So the other the only thing that they've added this is not a new form. They've just added that the type of probate, if it's other, if it doesn't fall into the conservatorship, guarding, guarder, guardianship, receivership, check the box other and write what it, it the category it falls into. Um, so here they've just added a few words. If the court approves the sale to the buyer, all deposit money held on behalf of the seller shall be applied towards the purchase price. If the sell is not conform, confirmed to the buyer due to an overbid or other reason that is not a breach by the buyer, the buyer's deposit money um, less the price, uh, the, the buyer's deposit money is basically returned. So if you've ever been to probate where they're overbidding, you, you have a buyer standing there that's on contract, but they get overbid and they already have their deposit in, they do get their deposit back. So they're just clarifying. So I like the way they've tightened up everything. Um, the lawyers are very good. Uh, we're very lucky to have them. So probate listing addendum and advisory. Um, if applicable, you will attach this form, car form PLA to your agreement, your purchase agreement. Uh, manufactured or mobile home purchase, agree purchase addendum, remember, a while back, they made the purchase agreement so you could just check boxes and make that purchase agreement for a mobile home or things like that just by adding the addendum. So it, it cut out on a lot of other agreements because we can check the box and add these addendums, which this isn't new. Um, it's been like that for a while, but I think that was a, a good move. So here I like this. They added the broker recommends buyer to obtain an inspection to determine if the property 
is in compliant with the above requirements that they're listing out on this form. We And it's saying we do not have expertise in this area. We're real estate agents, not inspectors or things like that. Okay. So that concludes this portion. We do have a session three. Um, last time I felt like it was too crunchy and um, I couldn't even get get through and, and look at everything with you. So now we do have Peter here. If you guys have questions, now would be a great time to ask them so that we all understand. Is there any questions? Any comments? Okay, we have a question in the room. Rory, you already um, have this, but once we're gonna have like a list of all what we need. Yeah, well, I have the summary. So hopefully we have a, I, I hope this is answering your question. I emailed out or had the summary list of every document that's changed. I'll re-email it to the brokerage today. For everything. Everything. For, for every this contract. is this is a, a forms release quick summary. I'll have this um, e blasted out again today in case you didn't see it last time. This is a really great form. It's going to highlight every form that's having changes and what they are. So it's on a quick summary. I'll have uh, Rhett Lee e blasted out again today. I love this this summary. And yes. Here's what you were saying too, that if I'm hearing the right. Some of the forms you have is not listed on that sheet either. On this quick summary, uh -huh. every change they made should be here. I'll yeah. I'll, I'll cross reference it. Yeah, it should be there. Yes, because that's what they how they presented this that okay. all the changes are on the quick summary. Okay. Now we're going the long route. We're going through each form individually because we want to show you that okay, it seems like a lot. Like if you took this quick summary, you're gonna go, oh my goodness. But once we look at them individually and digest them a little bit, it's really not too bad. And then I want to also remind you that you always have support. Um, if you feel stuck in a deal or you're having a problem, you feel like you're going sideways or you're trying to make an offer and you're not sure um, how to uh, write some things in there, come over and see us. Give us a call. Um, Peter's always here. I'm here. We're all here to help you. We want you to succeed. So if you have any problems or feel like you, you need help, um, and no question is a silly question, so just ask. We'll help you. Okay, so are there any other questions? I have a question, Michelle. Yes. Yeah, are, are these, uh, are these uh, new forms that uh, being released by, by you are already uh, conform in conformity with the N NAR and CAR? Yeah. yeah, yeah. These all will drop into your forms. These are these are the draft versions, but everything's going to be updated into your CAR forms. And, and the NI NAR, we will have a training on the commission as soon as everything on that is situated. Okay, so we will have an extensive training on that and then go over some scripts of maybe how to talk to your clients, okay? What what date edition what is the edition date of this forms? Is there an edition date of this forms? Yeah, if you look the at the bottom of it, 624. The end of June. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And then um the uh, you guys have probably been reading your updates as uh so the NAR, uh, the compensation on the MLS, right, goes away as of 817 on the MLS, correct? So it's correct. automatically taking off, taken off. But prior to 817, we're going to do a training and go over uh, the compensation forms, okay? And how to get compensated and what forms you need. So as of now, the compensation is still the same. It will be still on the MLS. Right, but but so she's asking, is it right now? Is it the same? Yes, the compensation is on the MLS. They will pull it all on August seventeen. However, please attach that that CBC to all of your offers because it is required contractually. It says it right in the agreement. So that's just you know you can put per MLS and what the commission is. So when you're writing an offer, attach that broker's form commission 
from the listing realtor side, is there supposed to be any changes after August 20? From the listing side, all of the regarding the compensation when it's pulled out from their hands. Well, you have a listing agreement, right, Peter? So that you're already a listing agent is on contract with commission specified, right? It's the buyer's agent that are probably gonna, you know, you we all need to know because we're gonna re be receiving um, offers. But a listing agent has a listing agreement with their compensation specified on the agreement. Right. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask you something too? Since we're talking about this, or like a listing agent. When you take a uh, take a, a listing now, mm -hmm. is there a certain amount in there that we have to offer? Well, we've been out asking for six percent. No, you know, you everything is negotiable. It can be six percent, four percent, five percent. Oh, you did are good. Ten percent, you know, <laughs> for land, yeah. Okay, I think that was my question. Okay, it's we know it's negotiable and all that. After the new uh, law yeah, comes yeah. in for the buyers, I go into a listing. The seller says, "How much you're going to charge me?" I said, I charge 6%. At that point, talk loud. At that point, the seller, 6%, period. At what point does the seller have to know that I'm paying the buyer 3%, buyer's agent 3%, the buyer's agent 2.5%? When the offer comes in, Peter, no, no, no. as soon as possible. It's no, I understand, but we don't have to. Vote you can it stipulate it. it. It's in the contract. Oh, that's for the state yeah, of the state. Exactly. Oh, that was. Yeah. That's, I think that yeah. was she was referring. To. Now, see, there's a there's a box though that you can check. You either stipulate, they're talking about the listing agreement um, after this law. Mm -hmm. You either stipulate a percentage, or yeah, you put so per. Broker's policy. You can check a little tiny box that says that about the compensation. So for us, we normally check that because we're in the commercial arena. It's different. Right. But I always on the listing agreement, I don't stipulate a percentage. Right. Even now, I've been doing this for years oh, okay. per broker's policy. Okay. So what does that mean? Stip a person on a separate agreement. You can have a separate agreement, like the CBC comes in from a buyer's agent. You show it to the seller and, oh, oh hey, they asked for 2%. The seller says, okay, and if that, there's room in if, there. If the, if the seller is savvy, she's going to say, ask me the same thing I asked you. Well, what's the bulkers, uh, the box she said? What does it say? Uh, what is, and they, the person, what is, and they're going to ask you, well, what, listing is the, agreement. Yeah. what is the broker's policy? And I'll say, when an offer comes in, is it what they so, have? Yeah, you have a separate agreement. That's, that's what I tell the, I'm telling, what do I tell the seller? I mean, I said, it depends when the offer comes in, what the seller wants, or what we negotiate. So we're having a discussion for those in Zoom. They're saying, what am I going to tell the seller? Like if they check on the listing agreement per broker's policy. So what is our policy? So let's say if, and you correct me if I'm wrong. Peter, if we had a 3%, which I hope we don't, but are you going to give 2% to the other side and only keep 1%? I think that would not be our policy, right, Peter? Right. Yeah, so it's things like that uh, where... Well, I'm confused. Well, I'm, I'm getting confused. I'm talking about, I mean, we're going to, I'm talking about, I'm going right, to 3%. I'm talking to what I'm going to pay the, the other. It, it, it's, it's negotiable, as I said. No, I understand that. That, but you have to get it clear as soon as possible. To who? The, to everybody. To you and to the to, to, to Well, the, that's to what I'm asking person. you. When I go to the seller, she's going to okay. say, how much I charge? I go 6%. Now, that's okay, what period. Now, I'm concerned about what, before we split 3% to the buyer's agent. Yeah. Right? Period. Yeah, you could put that in the, that the listing the agreement that if you wish. That stays the same. Yeah, you could put that in the listing agreement or per 
That's from the state yeah. attorney. Now on the offers, let's all remember there is a box that the the that they can check that the seller agrees to pay according to the agreement that the buyer has with the agent. So at that point, you're negotiating too, because like, okay, then show us the agreement. What are you asking for? So there's a lot of steps to it. That's why this, these questions will be a panel, will be up here. We're going to answer all of them, but there's ways in the offer as a buyer's agent to protect yourself too. So we want to go over all that, but in a listing agent, your percentage goes in. You can either put per the broker's policy or you can stipulate an amount for the buyer's agent. I don't have to go over that because I'm still yeah. confused. Okay. I am totally confused because I feel like this. If I ask for a 60 percent, what if the, okay, uh, okay, we want 60%. I'm just saying, uh, Peter. And, and the buyer, now we have to look out for the buyer yeah. Just in case, if the buyer wants us to pay part of their, uh, what is it? Uh, commission. Commission. The commission, or else pay their uh, closing costs or something, and we get 6%. That part, I can see if I say, well, I'm going to give them at least 2.5%. Their agent is going to have to come up with the rest of that money. Yeah. Can I do that? Yes, you can do that. Okay, that's all no, I want to know. Totally negotiable. It all depends on the between all these parties. I hope the seller, the, the buyer, and the seller broker on the, the listing. But see, when I first taken this listing, the, I haven't got a loud, buyer Catherine. Yet. I haven't got a buyer yet. Right. So okay. I'm I'm gonna ask for six percent, just to cover, just in case we have a buyer that can't make it through. That I can get, honestly give up two and a half percent to help them out. Well, the other agent will have to come up with the difference if there's a difference. If you are, yeah. Okay. So she on the, on the same equation. So Michelle, may I say something? Michelle. Yes. Yes. Michelle, may I say something? Yeah. May, may I say something? Okay, hang on. There's somebody talking in the room, Jeffrey. So they're asking a lot of questions for you in Zoom land. The questions that they're asking are going to be a, a separate training. But since we're all here in the room with Peter, there's a lot of discussion already going on about it. Yeah, I, I, can, I, can, I, can I make a comment on that uh, compensation they're, they're looking for? Yeah, just a second, because we have um, somebody talking. Yeah, you have to the, the listing agent to how, how much the listing agent will cooperate with you. Right. So I what, what Peter is saying, when you are representing yeah. buyers, and we'll have a formal training on this, in commercial arena, we always call the other agent and ask what our commission is going to be. But, but He's saying... You make a call to the listing agent if you're representing a buyer. Hey, how much can you contribute to the commission for the buyer's agent? So you need to make that call and find out, okay? Yeah, I know that. So if you want me to work for you, you have to give me another percent. That's right. So you're not you're not guaranteed you you're not guaranteed to give him three percent. Right, exactly. Give him what you want him to have out of that. Once the yeah. or what the seller wants to, you to have. Yeah. yeah. The seller agreed to yeah. let's take it. If they give us five percent, you want to take three percent, give them two percent. Yeah. That is okay. Okay. There you go. That's you got it. Peter, you know, I wanted to clarify something recently where uh, it's a listing agent. They decided to take uh, uh, the listing and talk loud, please. So the Zoom land. We had here. a situation where we had a listing agent that decided to um, come up with a certain uh, percentage for the commission without getting approval from Peter. Yeah, they went low, a uh, lower amount. Do you want to clarify what is your yeah. situation? Our policy, our policy is two percent, at least two percent mm -hmm. per uh, time. Our okay. policy okay. on commission for Coldwell Banker George Realty, uh, this is from Peter, is 2% per side. But is okay. it uh, a special deal, you know, is it um, a large amount that uh, we can uh, go for exception, you know, maybe one and a half percent, you know, something like that. So maybe If it's a large uh, purchase, then um, talk to Peter and we can have exceptions. Let me see if it's an exception. 
Good. So you got time to get approval uh, from Peter get approval. before you yeah. get that signed. Yeah, okay. yeah. So me, so you know. So everybody should have two percent is the minimum. But if you have a special deal that uh, you know or a large amount of uh, commission, then you you can uh, make a. I have a question. Come to me, and then we'll we'll discuss it. If if someone okay, I hear what you're saying. But if the, we're with the a seller and the seller say, well, I'm not going to pay 6%. Okay, I said, what about 5%? Yeah, she'll pay 5%. That's a sentence of less. But, uh, but anyway. But and your commission can be less than 2% unless you've spoken to Peter to confirm right. based on what the, you know, if it's a large amount of a sale, he might make a modification. You, right now, can I get less than 2%? On the listing site is what. I'm okay, talking. I got you. I got you on that yeah. because I see he can't tell women. What I'm trying to say, Peter can't set the the amount with the owner. We have agents and the owner have to work that out. Mm -hmm. But he's looking at what we're getting on the receiving side. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, and then we have a question. They're saying is commercial required the two percent? I think it depends on the transaction. Right. So Irma, it depends on the transaction. Um, I've been involved in a lot of commercial deals and most of them are, are at least 2%. Now, if it's a you know, multi-million dollar purchase, sometimes it's gonna be lower. So just check with um, uh, Peter and uh, uh, regarding commercial, okay? So, uh, question, so on the listing agreement, if the sellers agree to give like 5%, do you still have to put down how much for the listing agent and how much for the buyer's you, agent? Or no. It's not, it's a $10. It's not it's not not a $10. You check the box. On you the check listing, the box. On the, listing, on the listing agreement, you either specify the buyer's percentage, you put your 5%, you specify, or like I do, yeah. I check the box per broker's policy yeah. because what if you have an agent um, that that didn't do any of the showings or work? You know, you may, you know, that that happens sometimes. So maybe it becomes more of a referral fee or a lower percentage. This is yeah. commercial, but you can check that box even on residential. Yeah. But then on the MLS, how much there's no the MLS. MLS. They're going to eliminate it. You still have oh, to show. Yeah, oh, still. Yes. Right? So in, on the listing agreement, mm -hmm. you still have to specify how much to the right. buyer agent. What, yeah. Yeah. what, what is that? The 17? That is, so it's not going to even show anymore. Right. You can't put it, it ain't going to be there. Right. So you have to put it on your uh, listing. Right. That's it. Okay. If That's they're that. paying the buyer's agent or the leasing agent, then yes, you need it on your listing agreement. Yeah. If the seller is agreeing. Right now. Right now and in the future. Mm -hmm. oh. What if the seller's like, oh, I want to get more people in to look, so I'm willing to cooperate some. Mm -hmm. So that would be on your listing agreement. How much for the buyer's right. agent? Right. Yeah. It's fairly simple, and I'm going to show you after the meeting how you do it, because there's two ways to do it. You either per the broker's policy or you specify on the listing agreement, and I'll show you. Yeah. Any other questions from Zoom? Okay, so we'll have our, our third meeting on the forms. After that, we're going to, I know we've had a commission um, discussion today, but we will have a formal training on the forms and the commission, uh, how to uh, talk to your sellers and buyers. So we'll do that formally. So if there's no further questions. Is that next Friday? Next, next Friday, Friday will be the session three of the forms. After that, we'll schedule for the commission. So everybody, thank you so much. I hope you all have a great weekend. And uh, we'll see you next Friday. And please come Tuesday to see the um, balcony inspector. Thank you so hey, much. Hey, Michelle, quick thing. You said you have the packets in your office, right? The packets. Yes. Okay, cool. Thank okay. you very much. Jimmy, are you in Arcadia or Alhambra?